It's been around a year since a close friend of mine changed his mind 180 degrees from saying that prayer is nothing but a mental exercise to admitting that God really does answer prayer as a result of something that happened to him which he never expected. In this video I'll tell his story and if you're wondering whether prayer actually works you should totally watch this. However, if you're thinking that I'm trying to prove to you that God answers prayer, you're mistaken. Instead, the real point of my story is far more surprising and challenging than you may think. So keep watching till the end. Hi, this is Lucas and the point of this channel is to challenge the skeptic, strengthen the believer and to create a space for awesome discussions about God. Hit subscribe and the bell and become part of the community. So my friend, let's call him Tom here, is a regular member at our Bible study for skeptics in downtown Beirut. He's an introspective type of guy and at the same time extremely smart. Which means that whenever he opens his mouth to say something, you can be 100% sure that what you're about to hear has been really well thought through. Now, before COVID-19, we would go out for lunch once a month or so at the Burger King just around the corner from my office. And usually, Tom would show up with a list of philosophical questions about God and we would talk through them. Now, one time as we were talking over our burgers and fries, Tom revealed the following. You know, overall Christianity does look rational, but I have a list of specific things that prevent me from actually believing in it. My immediate response was to ask, well, what's on the top of that list? He replied, it's prayer. I just can't believe that prayer works. It may be nice as a mental exercise that helps people to feel better about themselves, but I simply can't believe that God, if he exists, would really intervene in our world. He also said that he's absolutely convinced of his position and that he can't imagine ever changing his mind about it. I told Tom the following right away. You know, we could talk through this question of whether God answers prayer the way we talk through other questions. But really, I don't believe that me giving you arguments or even sharing my personal experiences will be helpful in any way. Instead, the only thing that could ever make a difference is if you have an experience with prayer. He agreed and thought that this made sense, but he asserted in the same breath, yet again, that he really can't imagine how anything in the world could ever change his mind. Now I've got to be real honest with you here. I wasn't confident that anything significant was going to happen to Tom. In fact, I thought it more likely that nothing would happen and that this issue about prayer would just hang around between us unresolved. And I didn't like the thought of that. You know, I have a few close friends who say that if they just saw God intervene in their lives, they would actually believe. And I would love to see God do exactly that for them, but I must say that in many cases I'm still waiting for it to happen, which is something I kind of struggle with and it leaves me wondering sometimes why wouldn't God just do it, you know? I've actually talked about this issue in more detail in my recent interview with William Lane Craig. So if you wrestle with the same thing, check it out here, I think. So that was how Tom and I departed from Burger King that day. Him convinced that prayer doesn't work and that nothing will ever change his mind. And me with serious doubts that the only thing that could ever change his mind would ever actually happen. Then, some three weeks later, at our weekly Bible study in Starbucks, we read a passage which was all about prayer and for most of the evening our discussion centered around the question of whether human free will and the idea of God responding to prayer is compatible with divine omniscience. Tom was mostly silent throughout the discussion, but at the very end he said, Guys, you all know that I've been suffering from this brain condition and God simply hasn't done anything about it, even though people have prayed for me. Which is why I've come to the conclusion that prayer just doesn't work. So yes, Tom has suffered from this thing which would often cause him intense headaches, insomnia and all sorts of other awful consequences. 
Depending on weather and other conditions, his pain would be super intense at some times while being somewhat more bearable at other times. No doctor has so far been able to diagnose what Tom's sickness is exactly, which is why he has started to study neuroscience by himself in the hope that eventually he'll get to the bottom of his condition. Now, as we wrapped up that Bible study in Starbucks, one of my friends took Tom aside to ask him whether he could say a short prayer for him. And Tom gladly accepted, because while he was convinced that this wasn't gonna make any difference, he was still open-minded enough to go for it anyway. The following week, we were scheduled for our monthly lunch at Burger King. Now, I was there first, waiting for Tom in front of the counter. As he walked in, he said hi and directly went on, Hey Lucas, can I ask you something? I said, sure, go ahead, what is it? He told me, you know, the last two weeks my headache has been so intense that if I had to pin it down on a scale from zero to 10, zero being no pain and 10 being so painful that you wanna kill yourself, I was constantly on a nine. And even though I've been taking very strong medication, I haven't been able to catch even just one hour of sleep a night because my body can't wind down due to the pain. But then on Thursday, George prayed for me and I went home after that. As I arrived, I went up to my room, fell on my bed and slept for 12 hours straight. And since then, every night, I've been sleeping like a log for 12 uninterrupted hours, which is why I stopped my medication. And yet, I'm still enjoying the most blissful sleep ever. Then he said, and I absolutely love the way he put it, why do you think that is? Now, I couldn't suppress a smile and responded, well, the real question is, why do you think that is? Then we ordered our meals and sat down and talked for at least two hours straight about what happened, why it could or couldn't be explained as a mere coincidence, or why God would answer this prayer but not the prayers of other people who suffer even greater pain than Tom does, etc., etc. And I got to witness Tom really wrestling with the tension between his hardcore conviction that prayer doesn't work and the powerful experience he just went through. And as I said, Tom has a very sharp mind, so he really wanted to make sure he wouldn't give up his conviction before checking out all the options. But the fact of the matter was that Tom saw himself faced with what he thought was quite an overwhelming package of evidence. Not only that, but he has a strong commitment to following the evidence wherever it leads. And so at the end of our conversation, he admitted that there was no escaping the conclusion that he had been wrong about this prayer thing. And that what he experienced was, in fact, nothing short of God's tangible intervention in his life in response to prayer. And so the last thing I asked him over that lunch was whether we could tick off that first item on the list of his objections against Christianity. And I guess I don't have to tell you what the answer to that was. Now, am I saying that this story makes for the perfect proof that God answers prayer? No, I'm not. I'm perfectly aware that you cannot possibly build an entire case based on one personal experience. I'm also perfectly aware that skeptics can and probably will cite all sorts of counter stories in the comments below. You know, how nice that God chose to answer Tom's prayer. But what about the starving children in Africa who don't have their prayers answered? Or what about those thousand other times when God didn't answer Tom's prayer? Sure. These questions are totally valid and as I mentioned, Tom and I actually talked through them. So let me clarify what I am saying in this video. Here's a person who was not only 100% convinced that prayer doesn't work, but also 100% convinced that nothing will ever change his mind. So to say that confirmation bias doesn't apply to Tom's case is quite an understatement. Against all odds, Tom did end up changing his mind and he did come to the conclusion that God does answer prayer, even though he had been convinced that nothing could ever change what he thought was true. Which is why the real takeaway from my video is this. You might be 100% convinced that God doesn't answer prayer. Now, there is nothing wrong per se with having strong convictions. On the contrary, I think that's a great thing. But the challenge posed by Tom's story is this. 
If you shared a hardcore conviction against prayer he used to have, you might be next in having that very conviction challenged or maybe even turned around 180 degrees, provided, and this is key, that you go about things with an open mind. Speaking of an open mind, check out this video in which I share why Cosmic Skeptic's work has had a profound impact on me, even though I disagree with him on almost everything. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you over there.